Welcome back to part two of the sew along for New Look D0815. It's also um, pattern number 6549. Actually, the pattern pieces said that. So sometimes some of the um, parent companies have sub ones. So just to let you know, okay? So here we have all of our pattern pieces traced out. So here's pattern piece number three, number four, okay? So this is the peplum back, and this is the peplum front, and this is piece number three and number four, okay? And then we have piece number one and piece number two for view A, okay? Then we also have um, the front and back for view B, which is the skirt, this is pattern piece number five. I forgot to mark that on there. Let me mark that on there right now so I don't forget. <laughs> okay, so this is piece number five. So here's something to note. On the actual pattern itself, uh, what I did for this sizing, because my daughter is longer but then slimmer, is I used a size 12 in the width, so what goes around her waist. And then in the length part, I used the size 14. So I did length 14, but width of the size um, 12, because she is more slender. So just to let you know, that's what I did here. I transferred all of my markings um, that was on there. This is, it says waistline, so this is where the waist is gonna be. Down here is a, a marking, so that when we make all our pieces connect together, we, everything can match. This is very important. When you're a beginner sewer, a lot of times um, people tend to skip over this part. They don't mark um, and transfer all of their notches. This is very, 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 very important to do, okay? So just so that you know, this is very, very important to do, okay? So I transferred all of my notches, okay? All of these notches are very important to transfer. This is my grain line, okay? This is my grain line so that you know which direction it's gonna go on the fabric. It gives me the instructions on how many to cut. This says cut two. So I need to cut two of these pieces of the fabric. Okay, piece number, this is the bodice back. Okay, the bodice front. Okay, this is bodice front, view A. This indentation right here, this means on the fold. So the fold is going to be on this side of the material. I'm going to show you how to lay it out on the fabric. Don't worry, I'm going to show you that. But I wanted to make sure you understood. You have to mark all of these notches. These notches have got to be transferred over when you're making any of your new pieces. If you're putting this on the muslin or anything like that, you have to transfer this over so that um, everything connects together perfectly. Okay? Then we have our peplum part portion. This is the back of the peplum, okay? This is the back of the peplum, and this is the grain line. I'm gonna show you how to lay that out here in a second. You need to, this is size, this is piece number four, but you need to cut two on the, of the fabric on this, and this is also on the fold, okay? Again, transferring all these pieces, because what's gonna happen, this is the front and this is the back. These two pieces are going to connect. So you see how those two notches line up? When you're sewing it together, this is very important to make sure we know where our notch lines are, okay? And then when you transfer it this way, this notch here on the back is gonna tell us where the end of the zipper is gonna go versus the top of this. So this is where the zipper is gonna end. Okay, so this is helpful for your zipper placement. This is the grain line, okay? This is very helpful because it's gonna tell you how it's gonna flow and be really flouncy the right way. This is the connection piece to the back piece. So, this is the bodice back. This piece will line up with this piece right there. And that's how you know. And after you have this dart, when you make this dart in, you line this up, and you go like that, that's what you're making with a dart, okay? This is all gonna fit in here, okay? So just to let you know, that's why we have those notch marks. We have that notch mark there for the, for the, for the back and then for the front. That notch and this notch match up, okay? That's why these notches are very important. Do not skip over this. This is a beginner mistake that a lot of people do as beginners. They just don't transfer those marks over thinking it's not important. 
and it is very, very, very important. It's very crucial, okay? So, now that we've got all of our pattern pieces cut out, um, I'm going to kind of give you a, um, a shot here of what I do, what I do for measuring, for how much I'm gonna use for fabric and so on. So, according to the pattern um, instructions, it said for view B, I'm sorry, for, yeah, for view B, the skirt, it says I needed three quarters of a yard of fabric because it's going to be cut twice on the fold. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to measure this in the actual piece itself to know is it really going to take three quarters of a yard or is that kind of maybe a little off? You know, maybe I could use it worth half of a yard or something like that. So what I like to do is on my mat here I have numbers. I'm not sure if you can see that on your screen or not. Let me see if I can zoom out or anything. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. So let me scooch up just a little bit more so you can see the edge of my mat right there. So you're going to see that corner right over. Where am I? So you're going to see this corner right over there. That's one. Okay. So it says 35, and we're going to we're going to be working it for backwards because this at the edge is 36, all the way on this side of here that you can't see it's one. Okay, so this is a yard of fabric. So this is what I would use for a yard of fabric, and if I was going to place this on the fold, you see that at 36 it goes right past 18. So half of a yard of fabric is. 18 inches. So I'm going to need 20 inches of fabric for this piece. So I don't actually need the entire three quarters of a yard. I only need 20 inches. So you could say three quarters of a yard or you could tell them 20 inches. For me personally, I'll just go ahead and um, do three quarters of a yard just because if I wanted to add a little accent on something, I could do that. But let's say I wanted to do this piece here, but I also wanted to make my bodice out of that same piece of fabric okay on my on my mat here I've got lines so as long as I line this line up to a, a what's considered a grain line this is salvage when it's going the same parallel to the to the salvage then I know it's going the right direction okay I could put my other piece over here and I'll shoot out here in a second for you guys to see this. Um, little pieces of thread. So I'm pretty much just making it like an example of what this would look like on a yard of fabric. Okay. So this one here I'm going to move off because this one, we already know it's 20 inches. So here, so if I was starting here, okay, this is a yard of fabric. So one yard of fabric is plenty for this top piece, okay? So you could probably get away because there is some length over here on, on this side over here. We have about six inches of unobstructed um, fabric, should I say, on the mat uh, that you could easily put this piece on over here times two, and then this skirt piece can be all the same fabric for a yard and a half. You can get away with making this entire outfit with one and a half yards of fabric very easily at this size. So if you're doing size 14, you could easily do a yard and a half uh, and save yourself you know, a quarter of a yard in there somewhere. Or you could just all get it at the separate pieces. I'm gonna be doing two separate pieces so she could do a mix and match. That's how my daughter likes to do things. <laughs> Um, so this is kind of the, like the layout of how I would lay it out on the actual fabric. So just so you guys can get like a preview of it. Perfect. Like, yeah, you can see it very well. So over here, right, that would be uh, the peplum front. This is the peplum back. You can't quite see all of it in the camera view. Let me see if I can get some. There we go. 
So you can kind of see it a little bit that way. See that? It kind of lines up and it lines up and it lines up over there. Okay? So I would say that this is a very easy less than two yards project that you can do. It's really cool. Okay? So just want to make sure you guys can see it on the camera. I don't have any fancy tack things or anything here, so it's just me. Um, so we've got all of our pattern pieces and this is how it's gonna lay out. So because of the type of fabric I'm gonna be using, it comes in 58 inch wide. So I don't have the 45 inch um, problem. If you have a 45 inch one, you're most likely gonna need an entire yard just for this because it won't. This piece here will not fit in a 45 inch. Uh, you'd have to do something like that. Like you'd have to knock it down over to the side a little bit and use up that entire yard of fabric, which is totally doable. It's nothing wrong with that. It's just that that's just how it will, will look, okay? Um, okay. Or you could mix and match this one here. Just match that one there. Let me see. Yeah, you could actually do it in one, in one yard. When you mix these up like this, then you could do it all in one yard. Because my mat is 24 inches wide, so 45, which is actually 44 inch to in half, is 22 inches, and this is cutting right at that 22 inch mark right here. Okay, this one's cutting right at that 22 inch mark when I put it like this. So it all fits into a 45 inch. So you could get away with a yard, a little less than a yard as well for this 45 inch fabric. So let me get the fabric that I'm going to actually put this on. So just as a helpful hint, um, a tip. When you are prepping your pattern pieces, what I suggest is you iron them. This came off of a roll, so it, it wanted it tended to kind of roll on me. So I ironed it down with a dry iron. Do not put the steam setting, just a dry iron and draw and make it flat. This, this could also happen with the tissue paper. You could do the same thing with the tissue paper. Um, I just like this method because it's a little stronger, it's a little steadier for me, and I could kind of place it on my daughter and see if it about fits, which it did, um, lengthwise, and then this width size, it was pretty good. So I didn't have to do too much altering on this pattern for um, my daughter. Um, and I like it because it's gonna last a long time. So I didn't put the size on here because she's between 12 and 14, so I might write 12 slash 14 on here just so, so I can see that. Um, well, let me get my fabric, and then I'll show you how we're gonna lay it out. It's gonna be it's exactly the same by the way. It's exactly the same, but I want to show you how to do it on the fabric. So when you get your fabric from the fabric store, you are going to want to pre-wash it before you get started cutting anything out. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and lay everything out on this now and then um, it's the same it's gonna be the same thing when you go to lay it out after you after you have actually um, okay so here's the where the decision making comes in and I'm sure my daughter's gonna have her input on this but I love this fabric this is a gorgeous nice springy fabric and I love this yellow it match goes really well with it and then there's I have a blue that also goes very well with it see that this is a little thicker um, this is this is a much thicker fabric I like it it's a it's a medium to heavy weight woven fabric so I like that about this piece here it's nice and heavy it'll really hold up really well and then this one here is just 100% quilting cotton. It's really nice. And then this is a satiny kind of woven fabric. So these are all woven. They're not knit. Uh, the pattern suggests woven fabrics for this pattern. Um, it does not add. You kind of want to stay away from knits, anything that's stretchy to begin with. Just just once or twice. That's until you start getting really used to it and making smaller projects with it. That's what I suggest. Okay. So I love this with this or this one here so it's all going to depend on what my daughter chooses <laughs> so we'll see what she wants for the top and what she wants for the bottom and like I said she likes to mix and match so she may actually choose this for the top and then this for the bottom and that for the bottom so she can mix it up when she has 
um, different you know, style of pattern. Okay, so I'm just gonna take these pattern pieces off. Okay, take those pattern pieces off. And then here, I'm going to lay out, this is a quilter's cotton, so this only comes in 45 inches. So, I'm gonna lay it out just as it comes off the bolts. This is one yard of fabric, okay? One yard of fabric. It's like a yard and a couple inches, actually. Okay, so again, you are going to want to wash this and press it. All these wrinkles here, it's not good. Okay? You're going to want to wash it out. Okay, So, just to give you an example of how to place it down, once I've gotten it washed and everything else like that, then I'm going to cut it out and trace it and all that stuff. But go ahead and put my, my pattern pieces down. This one says on the fold. Over here is the fold. Over here is the opening. See that? This is the opening. This is the fold. So let me show you. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn this out like this and then put it down okay so just for the tutorial basis I'm just showing you right now but I'm not cutting this out yet I will wash it before I actually cut anything out okay so put my powder piece on the fold down here's the fold I want to put both my pieces that are on the fold down first that kind of gives me the, the the basis of where we're going to start with. Now this is the reason why you have to pre-wash your fabrics before and iron them out. You see how that's kind of wrinkling and puckering right there? This is actually distorting the pattern so it won't lay down straight. Okay? This is not what you want. This is not what you want. You want it nice and flat and already pre-washed. This is just for me to show you how to lay it out on the fabric. So there's that piece. There's this piece. We could actually nudge this a little closer as long as we have some space for cutting. Okay. Then we have this piece. Now remember, this has to go parallel with the grain line. Okay. There we go. This one can actually go move it right in here because over here is another piece of the salvage and it kind of looks dimply and stuff and I don't want to have that be affected too much. So you have to make it happen a little bit with the pattern pieces. Okay, so that one's going to go parallel with that one. And then this one, because it has to go like that, I can't put it here. So the notch it down a little bit. So I'll show you here what I'm doing. So I told you you're probably going to have to use an entire yard for just the 45 inch on a cotton. See that? It's parallel right there. And this is down, this is down. This is down and this is down. So this is how you would lay it out on your fabric, okay? So don't forget you have to pre-wash, dry your fabrics. Uh, your, when you buy your fabric at the end of the bolt, it actually gives you care instructions or washing instructions. For cottons, it's pretty easy. It just says to do a cold wash with a low uh, tumble dry. Cottons are very like sturdy kind of fabrics. As long as you get a good quality cotton, like a quilter's cotton, you don't have to worry too much about shrinkage or bleeding or anything else like that. So that's why I highly suggest starting with these because they're very forgiving. These are very forgiving. Yes, they wrinkle. Yeah, they kind of do that, but it's well worth it, okay? So here is the layout of what you want, okay? And, um, if you were wanting to do a lined bodice, you could line it. Um, I would just do two of these pieces uh, if you had extra, just because I personally like to sometimes line my fabrics for my daughter just in the front area, um, just because some of these fabrics can be a little see-through, okay? So this one looks pretty good. It looks pretty sturdy, so don't want to do that. So this is how you would line it, let, lay it out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them um, on the box below. And if uh, you didn't already tune into the first part of this, I'll have a link for that below as well. All right, I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next part.